Hey guys, welcome back to another Jamie Bot video. In this one, we're talking about the Ionic 4 date time. All right, and this is just a awesome little component inside of Ionic, which allows us to um, select a date and also select a time inside of um, this date picker right here. And so we're going to be looking at a bunch of different options for um, like providing a specific format that you want to select the date time in, as well as binding that that value to a variable inside your TypeScript, placeholders, disabled min and maximum values, some custom picker options, so we have some custom buttons up here, um, even changing the locale, so if you're in a different language other than English and you want your users to see that, you can do that as well. And then also providing specific values for the months and the days. So we're going to be looking at all that coming up. All right, so to start off here, I just have my own blank project. If you don't have your own blank project or some project to work in, then be sure to check out my video on getting started inside of Ionic 4, and then we'll get you set up with your own project. But assuming you already have that set up, let's go ahead and look at the first example. So the first example is just going to be a plain old date picker like this. Um, so Ion date time. This is the key piece right here. Um, I'm going to put it inside of an Ion item with a label just so that we can keep clear which example is which but really all you need is this right here although it does look quite good if it's inside of an ion item so whatever you want for your project wherever you want to put it um, i'm going to put it inside of an ion item all right so let's save that and check it out um, this is the most basic example so it's just going to refresh here and then um, it doesn't have any value initially we're going to look at setting an initial value um, so it's not just empty at first, but for this first one, it is empty. So we just click in this item right here, and then we see the default settings for what it allows us to pick, which is simply just a date. Um, so there's no time involved right here, although we will look at setting that in the future. So we can pick it, and nothing really happens. Um, I mean, the value changes, but like no, nothing, like it doesn't log anything. We're going to look at some cooler stuff in a second right now. Okay, so the second example is um, we're going to change the display format. So notice how before it was allowing us to choose the the month and the day and the year. Well, this one is going to set the display format to be MMMM and that means that it'll only allow us to pick the month. So if I save that and then go and refresh it, then for the second example, it's only going to allow us to pick out the month. Okay, so that's what, um, or that's how you do that. You do display format um, is equal to, um, and then right here, um, I'm not going to explain all the different ones. I'm just going to show you in the documentation where it describes them. You can basically put any pattern of things which you would like to select. So like. Here we put MMMM, all caps, and that is this right here. That is the full, the month, the full name of the month. Okay, so in our date picker, it had the full name of the month. All right, but if we also wanted it to like pick out a day as well, then we could put a space and then the next one. Okay, so we're gonna have a bunch of different examples of um, display formats, but but I'm not going to be able to cover all of them, so if you're curious, um, I'll leave a link in the in the description below to these docs where you can pick out exactly what you want. They also have a bunch of examples of um, common use cases. Okay, so either look at the docs or stick around for more examples if you want to change specifically that. Okay, let's look at the next example. So this one is going to be binding to a variable. Now. Um, in order to bind to it, we use the ng model. That's the key piece right here. Um, and then I also wanted to uh, register an event every time it changed as well, because I know probably a lot of you guys want to do that as well. Um, but something very key to note here is that the date, my date, this is a variable in the TypeScript, but it is not a JavaScript date object. It is, uh, it is a string. It is an what's called an ISO ISO formatted string. So the docs talk a little bit about that. Um, they just mentioned this ISO 8601 date time format. And this is just a well-known format in computer science for formatting dates. Um, it kind of looks like this right here. 
the year, dash, the month, dash, the date, and then a bunch of other stuff representing the time. Um, so don't worry, you probably don't have to worry about all that stuff. You just need to know how to do this one thing, which I'm going to tell you, which is um, this variable right here, my date. Uh, inside of your TypeScript, make sure that when you make that variable, um, you call dot two iso string on the date which you created. Okay, so if you're storing your date in Firebase or something, um, make sure you call dot two iso string on it. And in fact, if it is from Firebase, then you will need to call dot two date dot two iso string before you start um, synchronizing it with the HTML. Okay. Alright, so just to recap, the model, ng model, is tied to a variable called myDate. Everything else in this example is exactly the same, except for the model and the event. We'll look at the event in a second. But the model is bound to a variable myDate. And so what that means is, initially myDate is set to a new date, which uh, is going to be set to like the current time. So like right now at the top, it's April 22nd, 5.39 p.m. Okay, so when the program runs, it'll make a new date. It'll be set to that time. And then it'll call uh, two iso string, which will basically just turn it into a string representation of the date. And then that'll be synchronized with the date time. So if the date time changes in the UI, then it will change over there in the TypeScript. And if it changes in the TypeScript, it'll be changed back in the UI. And then the other piece is that I want to make a function right here called date changed. And I just want to console.log the date every time the date changes. So, so right here I'm registering with the ion change event, and when that's fired, I want it to call a function called date changed with the event object. Okay, and then so basically that event will be passed over here to the TypeScript, and I'm referring to it as date, although it's technically not really a date. Um, it has a bunch of random stuff in it, but how you get the actual ISO date is you call um, date.detail.value. That's where the date actually is. And so I'm just console.logging the event date as well as what's in our variable just to prove to you that it is really being synchronized um, when it changes as well. So basically when the date changes, we console log it. Okay, so here on our page, this one bound to variable, right now it is set to April. Okay, and the reason for that is because um, in the HTML we are still binding the format to be MMMM. So even th even though the underlying date uh, object, the ISO string, even though that is very specific about a very specific point in time, like right now, um, we're still just showing only the month. Okay, and if I change this to say March and then press done, um, it will console log the date twice. So this is the current date, um, and it did it twice, and they're exactly the same, just so that I could show you what's what's held inside of the change object, like the event object. That is exactly the same as the date. So, so I just proved to you that it is synchronizing um, with this date variable we made up here. Okay, so when you're binding to a model, you want to use the ISO string format. And then if you ever want to save it back to the database, I would probably recommend just keeping it in the ISO format if you're just using it right here, um, because ISO is a very standard date format, so that's completely acceptable if you just want to keep it in that format and not convert, keep converting back and forth between the ISO date and the um, JavaScript date. All right, so I think, I think I've over explained that quite enough. Um, uh, so the next example we're going to look at is just a simple placeholder. All right, and we're also going to kind of change up the date format. So right now we're we're MMDDYY. So this will allow us to specify the year as well as as well as the date. And it's going to have a placeholder called select date. So that's just a simple little example. Um, and when we refresh here, we'll see it says select date right here. Um, and that's just because this has no value yet. So instead of being blank like this one up here, it just has this placeholder, and if we click it, um, we can specify the month and the year and so forth. And so notice how, um, I'll just point out the formatting. It says 04, and they're all numbers and there's just spaces in between. That's again because of this format right here. So MMDDYY with spaces in between 
let's check that against the documentation. So it says right here it's 0, 1 through 12, okay? And then the DD is this one right here. And then the YY, as you would guess, it's just the two digit year. Okay, so that's why it is formatted as um, this right here. Next example is just a disabled um, uh, ion date time. So this one still has an ID on it. We don't really need to care about that. that. I just copied most of this from the docs and then I altered it to be a lot more simple. Um, and just like the minimal examples that you need to see. And so this one just has a disabled property and it has the value preset as well. So this is another way of specifying the value um, other than ng model, except for you don't really get the benefit of binding to it. Like it won't be two way bound, like changes from the TypeScript won't change it here and changes here won't change it in the TypeScript. You would just have to use only an event. So value could still work, but I recommend just using ng model instead and listening with the ion change if you ever need to do something if it changes. Um, so this one simply has the disabled property. That's the main difference. And let's go and check that out. It will simply be not interactable, so disabled, just like you would expect. Um, and you can bind that to a variable, of course. I'm um, not going to cover that in this video. Um, I don't want to cover it in every single video because people will get bored. Um, but we're just going to do like the most minimal examples, all you need. So this one, this example is the minimum and maximum. Okay, so what goes inside of here is actually a string um, in the ISO string format. So remember that format we were talking about where it was like the year and then dash and then the, I think it was the month. Um, that's the format that these min and max values go in. So this one is a year picker locked in between the minimum of 1981 and a maximum of 2002. So let's check that out. All right, so 2002 and a 1981. So it works just great. All right, next example. This one is a custom picker. So what I mean by that is Ionic has something called the Ion Picker, and that is used by the Ion Date Time and it is just simply this UI right here, the picking of stuff like this. But the ion date time is specifically for dates. And so what this is saying is uh, we're going to provide some custom picker options in order to give some custom buttons. All right, and we specify this as a value in the TypeScript. We're binding to it using the um, square bracket syntax. All right, so over in the TypeScript, I'm going to make that variable custom picker options, which we're binding to. And then inside the constructor, I'm just going to set it to be this object right here. Uh, I don't want to cover like all of the ion picker. I'll probably have a separate video on that. But just understand that this is just configuring some buttons. Um, we have a save button and we have a log button. And they each have a function called whenever they're clicked. And that's it. Okay. So just some custom buttons for our date picker. All right. And this variable is being bound to right here. Okay. And then in our in our page right here, if I click this, now we see a save and log button, which is in stark contrast to our cancel and done button. So if we click the save button, it will save the date. Um, well, I mean, is it like the function doesn't actually do anything, it just console logs. Um, and then if we click the other one, it will log something and not dismiss. And that's because it returns false. So right here, it returns false. If one of these handlers returns false, it means to not close the picker. Um, but yeah, let's not get into too much of the picker stuff because I'll have a separate video on that at some point in the future. Um, yeah, okay, so next example we're gonna look at um, is using a custom locale. So I know a lot of you guys are from like India. Uh, I think some of you are from like Brazil and stuff. So if you're wanting to specify uh, custom names for your months and stuff, because by default it's in English, then uh, what you got to do is specify uh, short names. So you can have custom short names. You can either specify them in here, kind of like this one is doing for the months, like you can do comma separated ones right here in a string, or you can bind to a variable in the TypeScript. This one is called custom day short names. So let's go and make that. Um, custom day short names right here and then um, this can just be a bunch of um, you know whatever you want to put here 
Uh, this is like some special symbols in different languages. Um, don't worry, these are just regular letters. It's just, it's just a Unicode character encoding. That's what the backslash U is. So anyways, this is just an array of strings. And then it is bound over here um, like this, custom day short names. Okay, and um, don't mind the custom year values. We're going to be using that a little bit later. Um, so you can specify the custom short names like this, or you can specify them kind of like this one is doing with comma separated values. So this one's giving custom month names and day names. Okay, and so if we check this one out, we can see that right here at the leftmost, we can see we have the custom uh, date name. So we're actually displaying the date twice, once as the name right here with a dot after it. Um, the short name, this is what the DDD is. I'll show you once again, DDD is day short name. So that would be like Friday, but we overwrote it using the day short names right here, bound in the TypeScript. And uh, that's to this variable right here, day short names, and it has this weird symbol and all these other things. Um, and so that's what gives us this symbol right here. And then if we click in here, um, it's not gonna allow us to choose it over there. Um, we choose it still with a number like this. Okay, that's just what it does. Um, and then it still displays the number right here as well because we specified, um, we also wanna display the DD, which is the, um, it's like the number representation of the date. And then in the middle, we also have the um, the month representation. So this one is um, this one's just all those ones we specified manually as a string, uh, comma separated values like this. So that's where these guys come from. Next example I have for you guys is um, specifying specific days, months, and years for your date picker. So with this one. Um, I'll put this on a new line so you can see it better. But basically we specify um, values inside of um, either a comma separated list like this or we can also do the same thing, bind to a variable like that, uh, which is an array. But in this one we're just going to do all comma separated values and this is simply going to limit the, like the values for the months and the years and the days which we can specify in the date picker. So let's check that out. Um, this one is limiting quite a lot. So if we click in here, we can only choose 2014 and 2015 because that's what we specified right here. And we can only choose the summer months right there. All right, and guys, that is it for the tutorial. Um, if you liked the video and it brought value to you, be sure to leave a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Um, and also leave a comment down below if you have anything to say, any questions. Um, if you want to tell me you like the video, I always love hearing that. And also subscribe for more videos like this. See you in the next video.